Well, it's in the news this week that corrupt cop Noreen O'Sullivan, who smeared Maurice McCabe by falsely accusing him of committing child abuse, in order to smear someone who told the truth about corruption in the Garda, Noreen O'Sullivan is now being appointed to the board of the National Maternity Hospital. This country rewards the corrupt. Why is Ireland so corrupt? Here's 10 reasons. Number 1. The legacy of the British Empire. Ireland was intentionally underdeveloped by the British Empire. For example, the famine was a manufactured situation. The potato crop failed because of the blight, but they exported wheat and grain. At a certain point, the British smashed the industry of Dublin. Before that, it was the second city of the empire. So whereas big aristocratic British families, when they wanted to set up factories and become bosses and capitalists, had loads of money in their pockets from pillaging the entire world. The Irish ruling class, when we got freedom, the people who wanted to be our new capitalists, landlords and property developers, they had an underdeveloped country. So the state treasury, all the taxes they collect, they all wanted to get their hands on that to get their companies going. And so courting the political parties, with Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil became a pathway to getting your hands on public money. The second reason, Fianna Fáil. Fianna Fáil were in power for eight decades in this country. They were like the A-team of Irish capitalism. When Fianna Fáil first came to power in the 1930s, Eamon de Valera bought up the newspapers and courted a close relationship with Archbishop McQuaid. It was a country where the working class was kept down under a boot heel. In the 1960s, when the economy started to improve, supporters of Fianna Fáil set up a thing called TACA, T-A-C-A, derived from the Irish word for help. It was about all the rich businessmen and developers donating to Fianna Fáil. In return, they got laws, legislation and planning that they wanted. This close relationship with the business elite and the developers carried on right up until the Celtic Tiger collapsed. And they're still doing it. But thankfully, Fianna Fáil have declined. They used to get over 50% of all the votes. In the recent by-election, they got less than 5%. 3. The Gardaí After the War of Independence, when working class people had protested and striked, workers even took over Limerick for a while in what was called the Limerick Soviet. The Irish elite the new golden circle needed to consolidate their rule and they kept us down by smashing us using the police and the church. The Gardaí were at war with the Irish working class and poor from day one of the formation of the new Irish state. They passed loads of repressive legislation to deal with what they said was a threat from the Republican movement. But that legislation could just as easily be used against striking workers. So it's no coincidence with that siege mentality that you've seen loads of corruption in the Garda over the decades. From the heavy gang of Special Branch beating people up in the 1970s to countless strikes and protests being battened or cases like the cover-up that followed the death of Terence Wheelock in Star Street Garda Station. The Garda have been at war with the Irish working class since day one of their formation. It's a corrupt police force that defends a corrupt system. Number four. Fianna Gael. Although Fianna Fáil were the party that were in power most of the time, and so were the most corrupt party in the state, Fianna Gael, when they were in power, didn't take long to catch up. I mean, it was a Fianna Gael TD, Michael Lowry, who had a close relationship with billionaire Dennis O'Brien and handed over our telecoms infrastructure. And look at Fianna Gael today. They're closer to the vulture funds and the corporations than any other party in this country. And as for corruption, to tarnish the Leo Varadkar, the leader of Fianna Gael, broke the Official Secrets Act and the TD anti-corruption laws. And nothing happened. Five, Dennis O'Brien. Billionaire Dennis O'Brien deserves an entry by himself. He made his money by bribing TDs. Tens of thousands was put into a bank account in the Oil of Man to pay off Michael Lowry so Dennis O'Brien could get his hands on our telecoms infrastructure. It was those bribes that set him on the path to becoming a billionaire and he now owns half the telecoms around the Caribbean and newspapers and media all over the world. But it didn't end there. Even recently, the Granahan McCourt Consortium, a group of businessmen who've got their hands on our national broadband rollout. Guess who is involved with that? Dennis O'Brien. Whether it's installing water meters or the fences the Gardaí use to corral protests, Dennis O'Brien has always got his finger in the pie. Reason number six that Ireland is so corrupt. 
another billionaire, Larry Goodman, who again deserves an entry of his own. Not only was he embroiled in the whole beef fiasco in the 1980s selling beef to Saddam Hussein, and then Charlie Hockey calls the doll back from his summer holidays to pass legislation to protect Larry Goodman, but Goodman also uses EU payments that should be going to poor small farmers but instead go to rich beef barons like him. Larry Goodman controls the beef industry like a mafia don and if you don't agree with his prices or his way of doing things you're pushed out because he's got an almost monopoly. And it's the small farmers, the poor struggling families that lose out and Goodman uses his billions to have influence over the political system to get what he wants. From Charlie Hawhey back in the day to the present day where he rents the Department of Health, the Moesian Plaza building on Baggett Street for millions and millions and millions. They could have bought the building for less than they're going to pay in rent to him. Seven, the church. I mean, when you talk about cover-ups and corruption, I mean, these people covered up mass graves full of children and anyone who spoke out against them in the 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s was denounced from the pulpit was banished from their community, was harassed by the police. Women tried to escape from Magdalene laundries, the police brought them back, they walked arm in arm with the church. The church is one of the most corrupt institutions in this country and was a pillar of defending the golden circle. They beat the working class down and made us feel like worthless sinners so that we would never rise up and challenge their wealth. And there's none in this country so wealthy as some in the church. The Sisters Charity, for example, when they were selling a bit of property around Donnybrook, the property developer who bought it found a mass grave. When Jesus walked into the temple and kicked over the tables and kicked out the bankers and the moneylenders, I wonder what that poor carpenter's son would think of the church in Ireland today. One of the most corrupt, ruthless and wealthy institutions in this country. And they still, despite the fact that mass graves have been found, they still control our schools and our hospitals, including the National Maternity Hospital. The fact that the church has got away with that is an infection on the body politic of Irish society. And infections spread if you don't deal with them. Hey, the eighth reason why Ireland is so corrupt, cronyism. Well, what happens if you deprive the entire Irish population of basic services like housing or welfare in the early years of the 20th century. Well, people have to go and beg to the local politician to get their medical card or to get welfare or to get access to housing. The person who's deprived you of those things then puts you on your knees in front of them to beg for the very things that they've deprived you of. And so Ireland is a clientelist and cronious society. But people need to wake up to the fact that the only reason you're begging at the feet of a TD for a house is because he's part of a political party that hasn't built public housing and is denying you the thing you're begging for in the first place. Reason number nine. Ireland was a very rural community up until recently. It was only in the 60s, 70s and 80s that Ireland started to become an overwhelmingly modern economy. Although now Fine Gael want us to be a tax haven economy and they've skewed the entire country towards Dublin and poor rural towns have been neglected. But corruption comes into it because TDs from the mainstream parties will use the Dublin rural divide that their parties have manufactured to try and turn people in small towns against everyone in Dublin. As if the poor Dublin working class has got something to do with the destruction of small towns. Number 10. The 10th reason why Ireland is so corrupt is the same reason why the USA is so corrupt or the EU is corrupt. Capitalism. We live in a society based on profit, competition and greed. The winner takes it all. People just like Dennis O'Brien pull the strings in France, in Germany, in the USA. As long as we live in a society where the wealth that we the working class produce is taken by a tiny little percentage, the 1% at the top, and they can do what they want with it, they will always corrupt the political system and we will always live with corruption. Only socialism can sort that out where the working class gets a say in what's done with the wealth we produce. Where we get to say how the billions are spent. And I'm telling you, we'd spend it better than the people who are spending it right now.